If you didn't win Wimbledon, you weren't number one that year. That's how much pressure was on you for those, these, this fortnight. And I read everything on Wimbledon. I used to read books. I knew every champion of singles, doubles, mixed. You know, I knew all this stuff as a, as a young girl. And I used to sleep with books in my bed and my tennis racket. And so finally I'm here. I'm and then it became a pro, the way I, a pro sport, the way I wanted it. Every championship is different that you win. It's always different. It's a different time in your life, different age. Um, I remember in 1966 was the big year for me for our singles, although I'd won doubles uh, before that in 61, which is some, in some ways was my most thrilling event ever because I had fun and I hadn't paid the price yet. Um, but 66 was a big breakthrough, and I had to beat Maria Bueno, who was one of my sheroes, to do that. It was three sets, so. When I finally won, that was such a relief, and also I finally achieved my goal of being number one since I was 11 years old, so that was really big. Uh, everything was around Wimbledon when I was growing up, not anything else really. It's very different today. So winning back-to-back -back means I'm really a good player because I didn't just, win, you know, I wasn't a fluke and just get lucky. They've been great in keeping tradition, but also having innovation at the same time. I would say they've had the best balance of that, but I think it reflects their culture more. Usually sports are a microcosm of society, so if you want to break it down even smaller, Wimbledon is a, is a microcosm of, of Britain. You, you see how they think about things, tradition, 